thieves are going to be coming down and we'll be raking and getting ready for Halloween and then Thanksgiving. And then before you know it, the Pelschnickel is going to be walking around. So unbelievable. But we're so glad to be back with you again this month. If you are joining us for the first time, Welcome, welcome, as we say in Pennsylvania Dutch. It's almost like the English, so that's an easy one. It is so great that you have decided to spend some of your evening with us here on PA Dutch Live. If you are someone that joins us every month, welcome back. Welcome, Sirik, as we say in Pennsylvania Dutch. So if you are new to the show, I always ask at the beginning, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook page, throw in the comment section where you are joining us from so we can give you a quick shout out. I love to give shout outs to the people that are joining us each month. And we got people already throwing some comments flying in here. Here we go. Our good friend, Carol, she joins us every month faithfully. Good evening from beautiful Don, Ton, Burnville. It's great to have you, Carol. It's great to have you as all. Always. Our good friend Jesse is joining us. Schöne Grüße aus Sauschwam, Lancaster County. Well, how about that? So we got Berks County represented. We got Lancaster County represented. The Critter Sitter is Ed on tonight. Critter Sitter, that was last month. Ed joined us. Ed Johnson, I think that's who you're talking about. Ed Johnson joined us last month in August. You can find that show on the YouTube channel. If you go to my channel and click on the live tab and go to the August edition, you can watch that. It was a great episode, but I hope you stay and watch tonight's show because we got a great show coming up as well. Our good friend Norman Jung joining us. Gute Maria aus Steinbach, Germany. He's up past midnight. It's already Thursday where he is. Thank you once again, Norman, for staying up like you do every month. Our good friend Kathy Kroll joining us from Fun Elizabeth Town, Lancaster County. Lancaster County is represented quite well tonight already. Our dear friend joins us every month as well. Rachel Bismazar from beautiful Don Ton Fleetwood. How about that? Uh, Fleetwood. Fleetwood just had a big party. It was their 150th anniversary, I think. And man, they rolled out the red carpet. I saw those pictures. That was really great. Our good friend Erica is also joining us once again. Howdy Doug from Bucks County. Howdy to you, Erica. I hope the whole family is doing Doing well. Paxonic joining us. Hello from Germany, staying up past midnight. Thanks so much, Paxonic, for joining us. Hope you enjoy the show. Our dear friend Ethan Rode, a great friend of the channel and doing some really great work at the Burke's History Center for Pennsylvania Dutch language stuff. Gouda Obit von Ottawa. We got north of the border represented. We got across the ocean represented. Holy cow. Randy is joining us. Philadelphia, first time. Well, Randy, I'm so glad that you decided to join us tonight. Enjoy the show. Uh, everything's quiet now in Philadelphia now that they got that guy that was on the run today i saw that in the news so we can all breathe easier right our dear friend mo moyer joins us every month from midlothian virginia hey bruder good to see you as well jesse says sal Schwab, new holland thanks for so in case people didn't know pig swamp literally <laughs> sal Schwab, new holland our dear friend ja molly uh, dolly excuse me molly no dolly moyer also joining us from beautiful Fleetwood in Berks County. Brigitte is joining us again. She joins us every month as well. Hello from Philadelphia. We got Southeast PA well represented tonight. Donna joining us from Holtwood PA. Hey, Critters coming in. Hamburg in the Haas. Boy, I spent a lot of time in Hamburg as a kid, and I'll be back for the King Frost Parade as I'm there everywhere, every year, Critter Sitter. Maybe I'll see you along the parade route. Storage Uwe. Greetings from Bad Kissing in Germany. We got a lot of people staying up across the ocean there to join us tonight ginger we got the west coast represented sacramento california thanks for joining us ginger it's only three in the afternoon with you out there it's a little later for here us on the east coast Brittany's joining us from allentown hey lehigh valley coming in that's going to be important for tonight's conversation lou ann she joins us many times from manchester maryland good to have you lou ann and our good friend david schollenberger we got boyerton in the house as well holy cow burkhardt's joining us from alabama i'm telling you we're all over the maps tonight our dear friend jeff marks my good friend joining us from myers ton well if myers ton is here here. We got them all now. What a great crowd we got going here. Thanks so much for letting me know where you are joining us from. And boy, do we have a great show coming at you tonight. Let's let's get right into it. Enough of this. Enough of this talking, Doug. Go at it. Well, tonight we do get to welcome a good friend, Sarah Jane Williams. Can't wait to share uh, what she has to tell us all about tonight with all of you. It's going to be a really great show. But as always, every month I like to start off with some things for your calendars, upcoming events that you can mark down. 
maybe a 10, depending on your schedule. First and foremost, have you always wanted to learn Pennsylvania Dutch, but maybe you just don't, you know, your grandparents are passed on. You don't know anybody that speaks it, but you really, really want to learn. Well, here's your opportunity. I've been announcing this. They've been doing this now for quite a while. The good people over at the Berks History Center will be starting up their new round of fall Pennsylvania Dutch classes, some in person, but also some on Zoom. So no matter where you live, whether you're in Alabama or California or Germany, you can sign up for one of these classes. They will be running this fall if you want to learn more information. And there's multiple levels. There's a level one, a level two, and a level three, I believe, will be offering this fall. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ethan. You're one of the teachers there. I think we got a, a level three this year coming up. So if, if you've always wanted to something you've always wanted to do, or maybe you know a little bit of Pennsylvania Dutch and you want to take it to the next level, this is the place for you to do it. Because no matter where you live, you can join the classes. One of the teachers, Ethan, who's on the show tonight, who is joining us on the show, he lives in Ottawa, Canada, and he's teaching the course. So it doesn't matter where you live. Check out the Berks History Center's website for more information where you can register for the classes and also check out a lot of other things that are going on. And Ethan did uh, prove me right. He said, yes, there's a level three, an advanced level this fall. So good stuff coming up there from the people at the Berks History Center. Real quick, Art's joining us from Mars. I take it that's not, well, I think we know which Mars that is, I think. <laughs> and Buddy is joining us from New Jersey. Well, good to have you there, Buddy. All right. Some things also for your calendar, of course. A good friend of the channel are our friends at the Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center at Kutztown University. We'll be having their annual Fall Haymet Fest, Home Festival. Think of it like a homecoming harvest festival. And that'll be on Saturday, September 23rd. I don't know better. That's coming up fast, people. Get that on your calendar from 11 to 4. It is free, free parking, free entrance. There's a lot of really great music and performers that are going to be there, educational opportunities food, artisans, craftsmen. So if you have nothing to do on that Saturday, check out the Haymet Fest. It's always a really, really great event. Also, if you are in the greater Southern York County region and you would like to attend a Pennsylvania German Pennsylvania Dutch church service, I would welcome you to attend on Sunday, October the 1st uh, at St. Luke's uh, UCC, it's on uh, Stone Church Road in Glenville, not too far uh, from Southern, well, in Southern York County, actually not too far from the Maryland line. The church service starts at 1015. Uh, I will be the preacher. I will, well, not the preacher. I will be giving the message. We'll say that. And I will be doing the message in a hybrid of Pennsylvania Dutch and English. So people that don't speak Pennsylvania Dutch uh, can understand what we're saying. But we'll also be singing all of our hymns that day in both verses in Pennsylvania Dutch and verses in English. It's going to be a great time. And they have a free lunch and afterwards that is to die for. You will enjoy it. It's free. It's stuffed pig stomach with all the trimmings. It is a wonderful event. So if you feel up for a drive to Glenville, PA on the 1st of October, I would love to see you there that day. You will not go away disappointed. I promise. Today's a cool day in history. Did you know that today, September 13th, is the is the birthday of a very important Pennsylvania Dutchman, our good friend, we're going to call him that, Milton S. Hershey. Today is his 166th birthday, born in Derry, Pennsylvania. Of course, would go on to create the Hershey Food Corporation, Hershey Chocolate. My God, you can't think of chocolate without thinking of Hershey. And he was of Pennsylvania stock. In fact, as a kid, he spoke Pennsylvania Dutch with his parents before breaking off and going out and forming his company and becoming a multimillionaire and doing all of the great things that he did later in life, like not getting on the Titanic, even though he had tickets for it, and founding the Hershey. Hershey, the Milton Hershey School, and a lot of other charitable organizations that he gave much of his money to before his death in 1945. So I just wanted to shout out a hundred, a happy 166th birthday to a sweet Pennsylvania Dutchman. I would also like to give a quick thank you to the good people at the Conrad Weiser Homestead. Back on the, uh, what was it, September 2nd, I believe, or the 3rd, whatever that Sunday was, the Sunday before Labor Day, uh, my good friend Chris and I, the Broken Spokes, we were invited to play at the Conrad Weiser Homestead. We did a an hour and a half long concert of our Pennsylvania Dutch shtick with humor and songs, and we had a great crowd. There were 100 people in attendance. The weather was super hot, but it actually wasn't that bad by the time the sun started going down. What a wonderful setting we got to perform right outside of Conrad Weiser's home. 
Uh, and it was just a wonderful evening. So I just wanted to publicly give a huge shout out to the good, good people at the Conrad Weiser Homestead for having us there. It was a fun evening. The people that were there in attendance seemed to really enjoy the show. We had a great time playing for all for everybody that was there. And we hope that we can maybe, you know, get invited back and do that again sometime in the near future. Every month we do a hee-haw style salute to some town in quote unquote Pennsylvania Dutch country. And drum roll, please, because this month's salute goes to Trexler Town, Trexler Town, Lehigh County. Uh, if you are from that region of Pennsylvania, most people know Trexler Town for multiple reasons, but I wanted to give that town a shout out. Founded in 1732, and as far as I could find, the the most current population somewhere around 2,382 people give or take so a big old salute to Trexler Town Pennsylvania good old Lehigh County well without further ado it's enough of me babbling it's time to bring our guest on this month we welcome Sarah Jane Williams who will be speaking about a lot of different things but mainly about the Lower McCungee Historical Society she's going to tell us all about that a very cool project that they are involved in right now and then we'll also talk a little bit about Sarah's uh, Sarah Jane's musical side but without further ado let me please welcome to the show Sarah Jane Williams Sarah Jane thanks for joining us Hi, Dag, me best. All right, all right. Hey, what people we got? She, she, she's spitting Dutch already right at me. This is wonderful. Well, Sarah Jane, I always like to start each episode kind of the same way. What's your, uh, what, what, do you have Pennsylvania Dutch connection? And if so, tell us about it. Uh, my ancestors on both sides of my family settled in Heidelberg Township um, in Lehigh County in uh, around 1735 or so. So we've been here a long time. Yeah, our, both our families, we go pretty far back, right? We're like cha chapter one of Pennsylvania history, almost, so to speak. Well, I'm so glad that you came on, and uh, you have uh, you sent me some photos and stuff to share with us. Uh, but before we get into the photos, tell us briefly a little bit about the Lower McCungee Historical Society. Okay, um, the Lower McCungee Township Historical Society was founded in 1989 after a group of concerned citizens wanted to save a log house from demolition, and that um, is in West Coastville, and it's in front of Costco if you drive along Hamilton Boulevard. Um, it was moved from uh, an existing site into the West Coastville Park, and the members um, spent quite a few years refurbishing uh, the log house, and it's open now for special events. But um, we uh, opened a museum in 19... I'm sorry, 2017. I'm losing centuries here. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> in 2017 um, at Camp Olympic Park, which is just outside of Emmaus off of Cedar Crest Boulevard and have been there uh, ever since. Well, I'll pull in uh, the presentation and you can share with some of the photos. So I imagine this photo here on the of the red barn, is, is that your main building? Yes, uh, we're in the lower level of a barn uh, that's in Camp Olympic. The upstairs is a social hall that's rented out by the township. Okay. And so we we're very fortunate that the township has given us this space. We're very appreciative of it. Sure. And uh, so I, I guess, well, I'll just let you talk. We have some pictures here that you wanted to share with us. Okay. Um, this is the central area of the museum. Uh, you can see it has all kinds of goodies. We have a farm wagon. We have a, a harp that belonged to my harp teacher. We have a domestic section, an area on mining and local businesses, education, uh, Native Americans, powwow, um, all kinds of things. So, you know, people will find something of interest when they come to visit us. And we're open Sundays from one to four. Okay. Here was another uh, photo you shared. I guess this is the farm wagon you were referencing. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a Gruber wagon? It almost has that color scheme to it. Are you, do, do you I don't know think off the top so, of your head? It, it okay. looks like a Gruber, but it's not. Uh, we okay. actually okay. made it. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> And that's the log house um, that it, the way it exists today. Um, and, so really do, and and what did you say? It it's it, it's from the 1700s. Did you say? Yes, it's approximately 1795 or 98 around in there. And, and actually, it used to be located originally behind uh, what is now Hunan Springs. It used to be the Bortz Hotel in West Coastville, and it was moved a couple doors away, and then uh, finally moved when it was scheduled for demolition to the park. So is this is this something that a tourist that would come or a visitor would come would be able to see the inside of? 
yes, when usually when we have our special events or when like at um, the harvest festival or spring planting or Christmas, or we can uh, arrange private tours as well. Okay. Okay. Well, the other part uh, that you were really excited, and I think you guys should be really excited about, is is this this big project that you guys are involved in right now. Um, a couple, I guess it was last year, and I, I should have looked this up before we went live. I had Doctor, what the heck was his name? The guy that wrote the book, uh, essentially a a really well known book on the, the story of the Freeze Rebellion, and I had him on as a guest on the show, and he told us the history behind Freeze Rebellion. I have the, the episode on my YouTube channel. Um, but now the you guys are involved in something new. That's it right there. What's his name? Remind me his name, it's Sarah Jane. Paul Douglas Newman. That's it, Paul Newman. Doc, that's right, because it was Paul Newman. I thought, oh, yes, Dr. Paul Newman. It was a wonderful episode, and I learned. I I, I thought I knew a lot about the Freeze Rebellion, but then he came on and was like, boy, you know, he, he totally blew me out of the water, but wonderful stuff. So anyway, that – if you if you saw that episode, people that are watching, then you know that you know a little bit about the history of this incident in our his in in our history. Um, but what is what's going on now? Well, I'll I'll start by saying that about a year ago, um, I was in a meeting with a group of historical societies um, at a passport to history meeting, and we were told that uh, we should look into having a project for America 250, which will be coming up in 2026. So of course, Mukunji's, um famous for the Freeze Rebellion, even though most people have never heard of it. <laughs> and <laughs> we decided, well, maybe that's something we need to focus on. And um, the mo a movie would be the best way to, to uh, tell the story. So I wrote a script for the movie and we um, uh, searched for a film company to produce it, and most people were not equipped to handle a movie like this. It was, you know, where they were doing more commercial work in the region. But luckily, um, I met um, Craig Freebelin from ubifire.com, who was working with Dan Herzog from In the Wee Hours, and they loved the script and decided to take it on. So we've been fundraising like mad and um, put together a teaser trailer, which is just one scene out of the movie. It's only two and a half minutes. And the movie is intended to be a 30 to 40 minute movie, or it could be longer depending on, um, you know, what we eventually want to do with it. We're going to, we're going to see the teaser trailer, everybody. But before we get to that, I didn't realize that you wrote the script. Um, so tell us about that process. Well, I mean, was... <laughs> not everybody's like, oh, man, I'd love to write a script. OK, I'm going to actually sit down and do it. So tell us a little bit about that process. Well, um, it was a, it was a process. Uh, but I once I start digging, I'm, I'm you know, I dig. <laughs> and um, I worked with Dr. Newman's book, um, the Wallace book, the um, Lehigh County his heritage books. The uh, there were a few you know, very good articles online, but not there aren't, aren't a lot of uh, articles. There there isn't a lot of material out there about the Freeze Rebellion, so it was a good topic. But we did as much research as possible. And Bartholomew, who is the vice president at our historical society and an excellent historian, also helped to do some of the research and review what we were doing. And Debbie Stoner did as well. She's one of our board members, and so we firmed it up and you know, decided we were going to take a chance with doing this and do fundraising. And this is the first time I've ever written grants or done fundraising, and it has taken on a life of its own. And I never knew what I was getting myself into with this oh, project. Sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, a lot of people being involved in some filmmaking myself, people think, oh, you watch the 90 minute finished product. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that mustn't have been so much to put together. And But if you don't know like how the sausage is made, it's unbelievable the, the process yeah. Yeah. and all of the different moving parts that are involved in putting together something like this. Here's a quick question about the script. Is it just purely like a fictional? Is it a historical uh, dramatization of the history or did you is there any did you fictionalize it at all a little bit or is it purely this is the story these are the facts this is what happened it's a docudrama so okay. it is it is pure historical facts but it's done through the eyes of a young girl who is has a history project too at school and she doesn't like working with books and you know reading these tomes like this so uh, she meets with her uncle who's a history professor 
and he decides to take her on a driving tour through uh, Pennsylvania's countryside to see the this, this sites where the rebels met and where this history actually occurred. And the, the thing about it is when uh, he's narrating through, um, through the movie, discussing all the sites, but she has this uh, ability to um, have visions. When she touches something like a stone wall at a tavern, all of a sudden she's transported back to 1798 and is seeing what's going on at the time. And so she doesn't know what's happening and he interprets it for her. So it's an experiential journey for the viewer and for her and everyone else involved. I think that is such a such a great idea. I, I want to applaud you for that. I love that idea that, you know, she's hearing the history, but then she's able to be like transported and, 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 and see it happening. What I think so many people that love history, like myself, wish we could physically do, you know, more than once I've been at some place and I was like, you know, at Gettysburg battlefield, for example, yes. and you touch something and you're like, I, just, if I could see, you know, actually see the event happening. Uh, I just think it's a brilliant idea. I, I, I cannot wait to see this film personally, but we, but you did say there is a teaser trailer and we're going to, hopefully this will work. <laughs> I think it will just give me one second guys. Uh, um, to uh, Sarah Jane sent me the link and I have to change some things up here. So I need this and then this and hopefully, hopefully this will work. Let's see. I'm going to pull us out. Here it is. What happened during the Boys Rebellion? Well, it's pronounced freeze. Now, this rebellion was a big part of our history, Kayla. It was named after John Freeze. He was an itinerant auctioneer, a local patriot. And actually, this was one of his meeting spots. At the time, it was called Enoch Roberts Tavern. Dr. Schaefer, it's great to see you. Oh, hi, Dan. What a nice surprise. I'm taking my niece Kayla here on a tour of the area today. Nice to meet you. Um, I was in Dr. Schaefer's history class last year. It was amazing. Oh. Thanks for turning me on to the history of this place. I've been working here part-time for a while now. I love it. Oh, very glad to hear. Do you have any further plans for school? I don't know exactly which direction I'm headed right now, uh, but I did join the local historical society to learn more about the people who lived here before. Maybe you've been bitten by the history bug. <laughs> what can I get for you? Uh, what would you like, Gayla? Iced tea, please. Anything to eat? Their chicken corn chowder is delicious. Mm. Freeze. <laughs> Fries. Uh, fries and an iced tea. You want that sweetened or unsweetened? Unsweetened. Is your sweet enough already? Uh, and for you? Well, I will have a bowl of the corn chowder, a glass of iced mint tea. I'll add the sugar. Nice time. I'll grab your drinks. <laughs> Whiskey. Whiskey? That was John Freeze's dog. Whoa, holy cow. If that doesn't wet your whistle, I don't know what will. Uh, I, I'm really excited. The quality is really great. Not that I not that I didn't think it wouldn't be, but you know, you had mentioned how sometimes it's difficult to find people that are willing to get involved in projects like this. Mm -hmm. So I do have to ask you, like, as far as from the from the filmmaking perspective, uh, how how difficult was that process to find somebody that said, hey, we're going to you know, we'd love to tackle this project. We're going to bring in these actors and blah, blah, blah. I mean, what, what did that process look like? Well, I um, sent out requests for bids to at least eight or 10 companies. And uh, I think I got responses from maybe three. 
uh, and then the, you know, Craig was really the only one that said they could handle it. The rest were doing commercial work. They couldn't do a film like this. And uh, Dan Herzog um, really loves doing documentary type work and historical work, even though he does a lot of commercials and everything else. And he's worked in Hollywood. He's worked in New York and, he, you know, he's bi-coastal with the work that he's done. So he has a lot of experience. And I was there for the um, teaser trailer shoot, and it was quite an experience. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I I was treated like royalty. I had this this seat along the side, and I had my own monitor. I could see what was going on. <laughs> it was really amazing with all of their equipment and the actors, and I got to help with doing the props and the sets, and you know, I was really involved with all of it. So it was very exciting. Well, you said the gentleman's name was Herzog. Last name was Herzog. Yeah, well, that's a good. It's a great Pennsylvania yeah. Touch last name, right? <laughs> well, there must be some interest there as well. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly right. That's wonderful. Um, so as far as the movie is concerned, what's the what's the timeline looking like? Well, um, we need to raise, you know, at least two hundred thousand dollars by January, and then we will get our costumes together and do the whole production package getting it together and hope to start filming march in the beginning of march okay and it'll right. be uh, oh. an 11 day shoot okay so you need to reach two hundred thousand dollars uh can i ask how how far are you guys along in that process well i i've written a lot of grants we're mm -hmm. you know requesting sponsorships you know we have some a few donations from people but we really just started it in july so and we had an indiegogo crowdfunding campaign, which didn't generate a whole lot, but I think a lot of people are not comfortable necessarily with crowdfunding or the yeah. kind of audience that is drawn to this kind of work is not used to doing crowdfunding. They'd rather sure. write a check. Well, I hope, so I'm, I hope not, that, I'm not uh, dismayed by that. It's just, you know, we're, we're just creeping along, but I, I yeah. think I, I'm praying for a good Christmas. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, if, you know, someone, if, if some of my if some of my viewers wanted to donate, how would they go about doing that? Um, you can just go to our website, or the, and there's a new website that we're forming, which is just www.freezemovie.com. Okay. Spelled like fries, or yeah. you can go to the uh, lmthistory.org website, and and the teaser trailer is on there now too, as well. And there's and a I I, I will I will link both of those websites on the show notes for afterwards. So if people do feel right. like they'd like to contribute to this project, this very worthwhile project, they can do that. Well, I, I'm so glad that we were able to talk a little bit about that. That's a, that's really exciting. I mean, that's super exciting in my mind to once, you know, most people aren't familiar with the story and to be able to see it in a movie format is, is so much more approachable for so many people instead of reading a book or, you know, going to some historical lecture or something like that. So I'm super excited to see this project go through and hopefully with much success. And, and man, if, if, if the finished product looks as nice and professional as the teaser trail, it, this is going to be a really great project. My goodness. I'm really excited for you guys. We hope to have it, uh, the release by next August, the end of next August and have a, a gala at Wind Creek Hotel oh, okay. in Bethlehem and, do the whole red carpet with it, but oh, then yeah. our, our high aspirations and with everyone's help, we can do it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So let's shift a little bit. We talked about the Lower McCunchy Historical Society. We talked about the new Freeze Rebellion project. But let's talk just a little bit about you and people that were looking. I, I skipped ahead a little bit. Sarah Jane is, is maybe some of you know Sarah Jane in because of her music. Um, you are an accomplished harpist. So I think we need to start right there because um, that's not an instrument that the average person plays. How did you get started playing the harp? Um, well, it's something I always wanted to do and didn't really have the opportunity till I was um, in my late 20s. But I was uh, living in a third floor apartment at the time, and I listened to some harp music at a friend's house and thought, now's the time to do it. And I couldn't put a piano in. I play piano, but I couldn't fit a piano in my apartment. So I happened to find a harp teacher, Dorothy Knauss, who was the grand dame of the Lehigh Valley as a harpist. And she was only 10 minutes from me, and she arranged to have a harp for rent for me, and I started lesson. But it was a life-changing experience. I walked into her studio, and the bells and whistles went off, and I felt it was in an altered state and knew that I had to do that the rest of my life. And it really changed everything. That's wonderful to hear. Yeah. Every time you sit down at a harp, do you still get those bells and whistles? Uh, 
No, sometimes wrong notes, but <laughs> just like me and the instruments when I pick them up too. Uh, my ear says they're okay, but I know that in reality there's some issues. So you've been playing harp now for 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 many years. You do public performances. You have, I think, the photo on the left is from. Is that from the Pennsylvania German Cultural Historical yeah. Society? Yep. Yeah. So uh, I I think I saw you once at Christmas on the farm, maybe, or maybe it was Hamet Fest. I don't remember. This looks like Christmas on the farm. Um, are you planning on? Are you playing there again? this year at all yeah. yes i'll okay. be at the, at the haymet fest then i'm usually there for all their festivals yeah well there you go people that's another reason for you to get out to the cultural heritage center so you can see sarah jane play and you do have uh, recordings available uh the one that i have a copy of myself is there on the right past and present secular and sacred music of the pennsylvania germans uh tell us a little bit about that album well, um, as I started getting more into my heritage and local history and working with the Historical Society, um, I realized there really were recordings of traditional music or what did the Pennsylvania Germans listen to, you know? And um, so I was digging through a lot of um, old music books, uh, found a few things, field tunes and um, you know, just single line melodies. So I arranged the music for harp and decided to do this album. And there's also um, a little uh, description of each of the pieces and the significance of them. So in your search of, of of putting this together, I mean, the harp, correct me if I'm wrong, but the harp really wasn't an instrument that the Pennsylvania Dutch were necessarily used to playing. Is that correct? Um, actually, that was another big discovery of mine. I um, I have a medical background and I, and I do harp therapy as well, but um, I was trying to figure out where, you know, when the harp was used in, in uh, Pennsylvania German culture and found that the Moravians were oh. teaching young girls to play the harp in 1740s. And so they idea. used it at the bedside for healing and for funerals and to help people to go to sleep. So it's like they were doing harp therapy in my backyard in 1740. And I was no just so blown idea. away by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. You know, when I think of the Moravians in music, of course, the Moravians have a very rich music history. And of course, the trombone choir is what I think a lot of people are familiar with. I had no idea that the harp was in that mix as well. You know, yes. from, from from my perspective, I'm not Moravian, but of course, then thinking about, um, you know, the, the, the Northern Berks County, you're on the farm in the 1700s, you know, making a living. The, the average family didn't have a harp. Um, right. you know, they might have had they might have had some other instruments, depending, but a harp definitely wasn't one of them. I had no idea that the Moravians, you know, right there in, in you know, Bethlehem and Lehigh County, uh, were, were having, were playing the harp. That's, that's fascinating. I did not it know that. It really is. Um, so it wasn't widely used in, in Pennsylvania German culture, just because it, you know, it, they're a little bit more difficult to, to, um, build and to put strings on them and keep them strong. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it was really a great discovery. I just have a quick question from the music. So I'm a, I'm a musician as well. I think you know that, but I, I have no, I have no background with a harp. I've never played one. I mean, I've, I've heard them played live and it is, it is really an experience to hear one played everybody. If you've never heard one played live and watch and watching someone play one is, is fascinating to me, but I just have a, a quick technical question. How often do you have to change strings on a harp? When they break. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but some, um, you know, some people will change them every two years just as a matter of, um, you know, keeping it in, in shape. But usually I change them when they start going bad or they, um, you know, start unraveling or something, you know, or they, it just goes out of, um, it just doesn't sound like the or good doesn't stay anymore. in tune like it yeah, used to yeah. or things like that. So if somebody watching this show is like, you know what, I have a daughter or a, or a grandson or me, I'd like to learn how to play the harp. What's, what's out there for people that would want to try and do that? And how would somebody go about doing that? You find a teacher <laughs> and, uh, so, and then a lot of teachers rent harps um, or they know where you can rent them and, um, these days, there are teachers online, um, uh, you know, okay. where you can rent them. But I think it's always good to do it in person if possible because you want to avoid any bad habits and have that um, TLC of the yeah. the personality sitting next to you. Right, 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 right. Well, 
uh, Sarah Jane, this has been a wonderful conversation. Uh, we didn't even talk about your your musical. I mean, you 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 talked about the harp therapy, but I know that you know that is that is like medicine for some people, and I want to thank you for doing that and making people's lives better through your music. The work you're doing at the Historical Society is wonderful. This Freeze Rebellion is just super exciting. I cannot wait to see how this progresses, and and uh, I hope if if able, I can be at that red carpet event in the future. That would be a lot of fun to sell to celebrate with you guys and and, and to see a, a really worthwhile project come to fruition, which is so rewarding. Um, and I, I really hope all the best for you guys. I will link both the Historical Society, the Freeze Rebellion uh, link as well. And I'll also, with your permission, Sarah Jane, link your website as well for anyone that wants to learn more about the work that you do personally with harp and, and music and things like that. If I may add one more thing. Uh, Absolutely. About, um, and now I forgot what I was going to say. So, <laughs> and you know that happens. It'll come back. <laughs> well, if it comes back, email it to me and then I'll throw it, I'll throw it in the show notes. <laughs> How's that sound? Oh, I know what it was. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I remember go ahead. It. it just took a minute. Um, we're trying to make the film available to all the school districts in the region. Oh, and the wonderful. region that was affected was all of Northampton County, Eastern Brooks, Montgomery, Upper Bucks. I mean, it was really huge area. Yeah. Absolutely. I believe I was part of Northampton then, but we were also are developing a teacher's guide to go with it. So we hope this oh. is a great educational tool because a lot of kids never learn about local history at all. So this yeah, is sadly, be- sadly, state curriculums make it sometimes difficult to build that type of stuff in. I I, yeah. I know firsthand, but um, I think also is the fact that there's not a lot of stuff out there for teachers to utilize if they even want to do it. So that's great that, that you're thinking about that as well, because that's so important. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, teaching history as much as people might argue me, but teaching history in this format, visual kids these days are completely visual learners. Mm-hmm. All the mm-hmm. students I'm working with, the vast majority of them are visual learners. Mm-hmm. It's difficult for them to just sit and read and concentrate and be able to concentrate on reading a book. Uh, uh, it is what it is, you know. So if we have more material that we can present history in this way, which is way more exciting and uh, interactive than what, you know, a dry old textbook would be. I love it. I just absolutely love everything about this project. And I can't wait to see it come to fruition. Sarah thank Jane, thank you so much for joining us tonight. What a fascinating conversation. I will plug all of your stuff uh, and all of these things that you're involved in. And hopefully we'll get some hopefully we'll get some people opening up their pocketbooks uh, and throwing some cash your guys' way for this project. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully grants will come through for you as well. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Well, thank you, Doug. This is a pleasure. Keep up the good work. Thank, thank you. And you as well. Lots <laughs> okay. Lots <laughs> good. What a wonderful conversation. Boy, You, I think we could all sit down with Sarah Jane for quite a while, a couple cups of coffee, and then she pulls out her harp, and then we're never going to leave because I'm telling you what. Once you hear her play or see her play, you're going to you're going to want more. You are going to want more. A couple of people I want to give some shout outs to that joined us here a little later. Uh, Ginger says, hey, John Peter Trexler. We, we gave a shout out to Trexler Town. Of course, go Trexler Town. That was her uh, uh, her hubby is a descendant of his. So there we go. She's giving that shout out. Jonathan Killinger. That's one of my current students. I hope he's still watching. Hey, right back at you. Erica says, so exciting. We cannot wait to see what's next. I agree, Erica. It's going to be wonderful. It really, really is. Carol says the actor playing the uncle is from Berks County. I know his family. Well, Berks County produces the best actors. Right, Carol? Right. (laughs) Dolly says, thanks, Sarah Jane. You're a fascinating lady. She sure is, isn't she? Uh, Axel says, Gouda Morsch aus Frankfurt. We got Frankfurt in the house. Holy cow. And Buddy says, Gouda, Alex. Boy, we got got all these Europeans joining us. This is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, every month, as you know, I try to bring you something Pennsylvania Dutch language related. And I was thinking about... Well, it's September. What do we want to do? I looked for some poems and I looked for some, you know, other things because last month I gave you some uh, beliefs and superstitions and things like that. And then in the process of me making my sauerkraut this year, which I do every year, uh, I thought there is a we got to do something sauerkraut related because I cannot be the only person in Pennsylvania Dutch country that at this time of the year is getting their cabbage out of their garden that they grew and is making sauerkraut. Because as we say in Pennsylvania Dutch, you're as Dutch as sauerkraut. It doesn't get any more Dutch than sauerkraut, right? So I went through my library looking for any piece of Pennsylvania Dutch literature that gave a tip of the hat to sauerkraut and son of a gun. A poet who we have featured many times before on the show, Louisa Weitzel, 
she came through once again. She wrote a poem called Sauerkraut. <laughs> Perfect, right? And Louisa Weitzel lived, just to remind everybody, from 1862 to 1934. She was a very prolific poet. She wrote a lot of Pennsylvania Dutch poetry. So I have the Pennsylvania Dutch on the left, and I have the uh, English on the right. If you don't speak English, I'll pull myself out so you can see. I'm going to read the Pennsylvania Dutch there on the left-hand side. You can follow along on the English. I just love this poem. And if you love sauerkraut as much as I do, I think you'll probably like it too. So here we go. Sauerkraut by Louise Weitzel. You get me a blendy sauerkraut mit Speck von feta zai and goody schissel grumbira, but dricked muss all noch bei. Schunst will ich nix uf dera well, schunst nix, ich bleib dabei. Und wann ich nix mehr esse kann, und alles ist vorbei, ess ich noch ein wenig sauerkraut und sag da well goodbye. <laughs> oh, Louise, what a wonderful, what a wonderful ode to our dear sauerkraut. Just that last part is what gets me the most. And when it's all over, just I'm just going to eat a little more sauerkraut and, and wish the world goodbye. Boah, how about that, dear friends? Come on, I know people watching this show have to be sauerkraut fressers just like me. Boy, I, I cannot get enough of that stuff. I just love it. And, I, and you all know this, homemade is the best right it's the absolute best every month i also try to bring you some kind of music musical piece in pennsylvania dutch and i had originally pulled out one that i was going to show you by a good friend of the channel keith brinsenhoff and then i thought douglas what are you doing you had a guest on tonight that is an accomplished musician I think you should share her work with everybody. So, dear friends, we're going to, our musical selection this month comes from Sarah Jane Williams, who was on the show tonight. And this is her musical video accompanying the song Simple Gifts, which is a tune that many of you are familiar with, with her playing the harp. So, let me pull this video up now. We'll watch this, everybody. Uh, hold on. Share screen. Simple Gifts. Here we go. Enjoy. Well, dear friends, what was prettier, the music or the wonderful, wonderful 
scenes of our beautiful homeland there in southeastern Pennsylvania. They're both beautiful, right? And you know, the song is so true. Simple gifts. And if you know the, the lyrics to that song, it's it's so true. This is so true that we life is full of so many simple gifts that we take for granted every day. Time to sit back, hit that pause button every once in a while, and enjoy the simple gifts that we are given, whether it is listening to a song, walking out in a field among flowers, watching a cat sleep. All of those things are just the simple gifts in our life that all too often we just, in the busyness of the world that we're living in, and you all know what I'm talking about, we forget. We forget all too easy. Uh, and I think that's one thing that our ancestors understood because life was so, so much slower for them. And sometimes I longingly look back at that era thinking, I wish we could all slow down. There's a lot of things about that era that I wouldn't want to have to experience. I like the idea of being able to shower every night that I, that I don't want to, that I don't want to give up. But I would invite all of you this week to hit the pause button, relax a little bit. We're, you know, we're moving into fall. What a wonderful time of year as the leaves start to change and Pennsylvania turns absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Take the time to hit that pause button and go out and buy one of Sarah Jane's CDs. And then you can listen to her beautiful music whenever you want. When you want to hit that pause button, you pop that CD in and I'm sure you'll be able to find peace and rest, which we all need all so dearly right now. What a wonderful evening, dear friends. Hey, if you like what we're doing here and you'd like to get some of your own PA Dutch merch, you know what you can do. Check out our Zazzle shop. We got some brand new uh, designs out there. We shared these with you last week. I love you as much as red beet eggs. That's a lot. If I tell somebody that, I truly mean it, right? And our lovely ring bologna once, ring bologna twice, kutztan, kutztan cheese. That's nice. You can get that in the form of a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, stickers, a magnet for on your fridge, a baby onesie, a bib. I can keep going. Sazzle's site has thousands of different things you can get our images printed on. We got this one, which I love so much. Ach, don't talk so dumb. Now, you know exactly. That's a good Pennsylvania Dutchman that's saying it to you. We got that phrase on the front and the and the grumpy old Pennsylvania Dutch Haas Fra on the back. <laughs> and, of course, we have our Dunabetta t-shirts, our Mox Good stuff, our Ich bin Deutsch, tons of stuff. Check out our website, zazzle.com backslash P-A Dutch stuff. You will be able to find. Listen, Christmas will be here before you know it, dear friends, before you know it. So get your stuff. Order now. Order now. <laughs> If you like what we're doing here and we'd like to financially support us, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com backslash Doug Mainford. All money received goes towards the upkeep of the channel. Of course, I would prefer if this month you didn't buy me anything. And if you were going to buy me some coffees, you take that money and you donate it to the Freeze Rebellion Project because they need your money too. We want to see this project come to fruition. And you saw the teaser, man. That really wet my appetite. And I'm sure it did you guys as well. And again, I will put that link in the show notes down below after I post this to YouTube and I will be plugging that throughout the fall and all my social media stuff as well. We have some people that I'd like to give personal shout outs to that have supported us financially in the in the recent month. Our good friend Alan Moyer, Ken Ebernickel and Todd Santi, thank you so much for your financial support in the past month and if anybody else out there would like to, it's just one click away. buymeacoffee.com to Doug Mainford. Again, you don't have to. If you just enjoy what we're doing here and you just want to enjoy it, I'm perfectly okay with that, dear friends. Mark your calendars because we're going to be back here in exactly a little over a month. And I got a very special, and I hope that this, I hope we can pull this off, a very, very special October edition of PA Dutch Live. We will be coming live on October the 25th, a week before thanks, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, no, Halloween. And I have lined up the one, the only, if you're from Berks County, you know this guy, Charlie Adams. Charlie Adams was on WEEU for, I don't know, a bajillion years in the morning show. When I was a kid, he was on. And he's famous for writing uh, collections of ghost stories of Berks County. I asked him to come on the show. He agreed. And he's going to be sharing with us specifically ghost stories related to the Pennsylvania Dutch. It will be get us in that Halloween mood to get ready for the Spooka and the King Frost parade and all that stuff that's going to be happening in October. I cannot wait to have Charlie on the show. Hopefully everything will go as planned. He did say to me, 
I'm not really big on technology, Doug. And I said, well, Charlie, we'll figure it out somehow. So hopefully we can make that work. But that's the plan. Wednesday, October 25th, 2023, 6 p.m. Right here on the YouTube channel. We'll be back with our next edition of PA Dutch Live. It's going to be a good one. I'm telling you, people, I cannot thank all of you enough for taking time out of your busy lives to join me month after month here on the YouTube channel, on this show, this crazy little show about all things Pennsylvania Dutch that we get people staying up after midnight across the ocean for. We got people joining us from California and all over the place. I cannot thank you enough, dear friends, from the bottom of my heart that you take time out to to go on this journey with me from month to month. And it's because of people, you know, you guys out there that I try and find people like Sarah Jane and Charlie Adams and the people that we've had on the past to bring you some quality entertainment, whether it's educational or fun or entertaining, but we're going to keep it coming at you as long as we can. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, I don't know about click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. So every time a new video posts, you can see it coming out every Friday. I do a Pennsylvania Dutch word of the week, one in English with an English description and one all in Pennsylvania Dutch. For those of you that know Pennsylvania Dutch and want to keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch, along with all of the other videos and stuff that I'm posting, not on Fridays. And of course, if you're on Facebook, you should be liking the PA Dutch 101 site as well. We're also on Instagram, so you get your Monday meme. And we're on Twitter. Well, it was Twitter. That's what I'm going to keep calling it. Elon Musk can forget about it. I'm saying Twitter. Dear friends, till next month, I hope that you all stay healthy, happy, do what I said earlier. Find some time to hit that pause button and 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 enjoy this change of the season as we move into fall. Dear friends, I can't wait to be with you all again at the end of October. But until then, keep practicing your, practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch. Shoot me a message on YouTube or on Facebook or on Instagram. I love hearing from you guys. And until next month, as we always say, in Pennsylvania Dutch, Mox Goot. <laughs> Max gut zu dir, Max gut zu dir, Max gut zu dir for now. Unsere Zeit ist all und so, es ist Max gut for now. Hoff wieder mit dir zu sein, hoff du bringst sie rick and frein. Max gut zu dir, Max gut zu dir, Max gut zu dir for now. Unsere Zeit ist all und so, es ist Max gut for now. Hoff wieder mit dir zu sein, hoff du bringst zurück ein Freund. Und so Max gut, Max gut, lieber Freund, Max gut.